Hello students, today we are going to discuss about birth of a child with visual impairment and its effects on parents and family dynamics. Nowhere is the impact of an individual with a disability so strongly felt as in the family. Parents and siblings may react with shock, disappointment, anger, depression, guilt and confusion. Relationship between family members often changes in either a positive or a negative manner. The various factors which influence the ways in which families respond to an infant with a birth defect or disability are the emotional stability of each family member, their religious values and beliefs, their socio-economic status, the severity of the disability their type of disability. The depressive symptoms observed in individuals with visual impairment include dysphonic and irritable mood, flat or restricted affect, tearfulness, social isolation and withdrawal from others and suicidal ideation. Also stimuli specific anxiety such as busy streets, crowded rooms, noisy halls and many other situations can provoke remarkable fear responses initially in individuals with visual impairment. Furthermore, individuals with visual impairment may experience visual hallucinations as a direct symptom of vision loss. In such cases, there is no known psychological correlate. The presence of visual images that range from bizarre to non-bizarre may merely be psychological correlates of vision loss, but nonetheless can be significant source of distress for individuals with visual impairment who have been poorly educated about their visual experiences. Adjusting to vision loss not only requires the person with visual impairment to cope with stress, but adapt to functioning with less stimulus input from their environment. Although all senses are used in human learning, in most cases such learning is largely contingent on visual information. When visual information is restricted to any degree, learning, problem solving, orientation, memory systems and even decision making may deteriorate temporarily as a result of adjusting to less sensory awareness and stimulus input. Individuals with visual impairment show variance in personality style, attributional style, locus of control, family support, interpersonal relationships and financial availability. The dimension of effect will depend on the degree of disability and at the onset of impairment. If the loss is prelingual, it has more significant effects on development marked by experiences that leave them confused and angry. Loss of sight poses a number of problems in the individual and his family resulting in psychological distress in all people with visual impairment. According to Carroll, visual impairment may affect functional independence and compromise psychological security not only in the individual with visual impairment, but in the family as well. Activities of daily living are disrupted, communication skills are affected, impacting social functioning. They may be reluctant to attend social functions or go to crowded places for fear of embarrassment. Persons with sight loss may be afraid to leave home because of safe mobility issues. Transportation can be a problem. One could face job and financial insecurity or change in career plans. 
visual impairment creates loss in aesthetic pleasure there may be numerous changes in quality of life and changes in life goals that affect the visually impaired as well as the family taylor explains that sight loss affects everyone in the family both the person with visual impairment and the family members can have difficulty in adjusting but not all are equally affected and some have more difficulty than others role variation in the family is common and therefore can be stressful for all many express feeling of fear resentment guilt and apprehension they may feel pushed to their own psychological limits at the same time they might also be trying to cope with economic and social changes and whatever special circumstances may apply within the context of a given family considering the societal point of view blindness is a medical phenomenon it is perceived as an abnormality only when it is brought into the social context it evolves different emotional reactions in different persons the societies have developed their own image of persons with visual impairment of their capabilities and of their limitations visual impairment does not remain a simple sensory loss to him or her it is confounded with psychological overtones resulting in changes in the self concept of the child in the society people generally do not have a born based knowledge about loss but may have preconceived attitude about visual impairment for example persons with visual impairment cannot do any activity or they are very good at singing the human brain eye ear and limb are not just physical organs impairment of any of these organs leads to a restructuring of social relationships and to a displacement of all the system of behavior understanding the nature of a disability and the means of compensating for it are the core of any system of rehabilitation and special education the uniqueness approach lies in understanding the disability not as a biological impairment having psychological consequences but as a socio cultural development phenomenon moreover a defect varies psychologically in different cultural and societal environments the blindness of an american farmer's daughter of a ukrainian landowner's son of a german duchess of a russian peasant of a swedish proletarian these are all psychologically entirely different facts another argument from the survival point of view blindness in the world of nature is a more severe impairment than deafness in the social world however deafness is a more severe disability because it prevents mastering of speech blocks verbal communication and bars entry to the world of culture unlike most other minority groups which enjoy certain geographical cultural social physical not communicative advantages that increase their potential to obtain a share of power through traditional methods disabled people are the weak the different the half pitched half despised members of every group in a society where the ultimate operational value is the perception of superiority to other people individuals with disabilities are the natural inhabitants of the lower region of the hierarchy and they are highly valued as such millions silent and invisible disabled persons live in a state of unspoken but very real untouchability and millions more live in fear on the edge of that fate an apparently fortunate relatively affluent mostly able bodied majority struggle unsuccessfully to escape the emerging consequences that their primitive approach to disability in combination with similarity 
obsolete policies in other areas is undermining their psychological, social and economic security and threatening to severely limit even destroy some of the best aspects of the culture in which their children and grandchildren will have to live. We see the term psychosocial and the phrase psychosocial patterns to help communicate the poorly understood fact that the basic material of human being and human society is composed not of a series of relatively distinct phenomenal areas such as psychology, ideology, individual, society, rod practice, but rather of a continuum of perceptual activity patterns which radiate from and to the total universe formed by each personal consciousness that psychology, concept, individual, society and action or simply hypothetical focuses on undivided areas of one continuous system. Given these firmly entrenched psychological, social and physical barriers, it is difficult to imagine any substantial achievement of an equitable and practical psychosocial participation for all individuals with disabilities that does not involve a significant restructuring of operational human values based on a more profound understanding of reality. Now let us discuss about the impact on the family. Although attention is appropriately focused on the person with visual impairment, there is also a great need to understand the impact on the individual family system. The parents vacillate between denial, anger, guilt and despair on the one hand and overprotective love on the other hand. It has been suggested that blindness is unconsciously or even consciously viewed by the society as punishment for sin and as psychologically equivalent to castration. The blind child's first encounter with the effects of these or other emotional reactions to blindness often is within his or her own home. Somers in one of the most extensive studies in this area found five major patterns of parental reaction to their blind child. The number one is acceptance, two denial of the effects of disability, three overprotectiveness, four rejection disguised as over solitariousness and anxious concern, five over rejection. Biological helplessness of early infancy initiates a dependence on other human beings and a lifetime relationship of giving and taking, obeying and challenging, pleasing and displeasing, accepting and rejecting. Children learn to fit into a society with rules, traditions, expectations, beliefs and values determined by others. They are influenced by parents, siblings, neighbors, peers, teachers, leaders, heroes and politicians. Vision loss at birth will have a more significant effect on individual development than one that occurs later in life. If sight is lost prior to the age of 5, useful visual imagery may disappear. Best staged that if sight is lost after the age of 5, it is possible for the person to retain some visual memories which may help in imagining and understanding many visual problems. This frame of visual reference may be maintained over a period of years depending on the severity of the visual problem. Total blindness that occurs prior to the age of 5 has the greatest negative effect on overall functioning. Now let us see the family crisis, the initial impact. In response to their children, parents do experience common feelings and reactions, but the pawn and intensity of these feelings may vary. The adjustment process for most parents is continuous and distinctively individual. 
The parental response to birth of a child with a disability may include four stages shock, realization, defensive retreat and acknowledgement. Let us see one by one. Shock. The initial response to the birth of an infant with a disability is shock. At this time, the parents may need assistance the most, yet the least amount of help may be available. The parents may be unable to process or comprehend information provided by medical or other health related personnel. They may experience the greatest assence on their self-worth and value systems. The next is realization. During the stage of realization, parents come to understand the actual demands and constraints that will come with raising glare exceptional child. This stage is characterized by several types of parental information. Parents may be anxious or fearful about their ability to cope with the demands of caring for children with white needs. They may be upset or easily irritated. They may spend considerable time in self-accuration, self-pity and self-hate. Next is defensive retreat. It is the stage in which parents attempt to avoid dealing with the anxiety and providing realities of their children's conditions. They may try to solve their dilemma by seeking placement for a child in a clinic institution or residential setting or disappearing or retreating for a while to a safer or less demanding environment away from family and friends. And regarding acknowledgement, this is the stage in which parents are to mobilize their strengths to confront the conditions created by having an exceptional child. During the stage, the parents become capable of involving themselves in the intervention and treatment process, are better able to comprehend information or direction provided by a specialist concerning the child's condition and treatment, become interested in joining an organization that is suited to their children's condition and the needs of the family begin to accept the child with a disability as well as others and even themselves. Now we are going to discuss about the birth of the child with visual impairment and its impact on relationship between husband and wife, parent and child, mother and child, father and child and the relationship with the siblings. The birth and the continued presence of a child with a disability influence the manner in which the family members respond to one another. The mother may have fewer limits to relate other children in the family. The other members of the family may have to assume some of the roles that were once of the mothers. The mother's need for support and assistance may bring the family closer together as a unit. Mothers often form dyadic relationship with their exceptional children. As a result, family power structure is often altered substantially by the arrival of an infant with a disability. Husband and wife relationship, marital status. A child's disability affects a marriage in the ways such as it provides powerful emotions in both parents. It reshapes the organization of the family. It creates fertile ground for conflict. The change in the amount of time available for the couple, the heavy financial burdens, mid the fatigue may contribute to their stress. Parental counseling and training can be helpful in avoiding many of the problems countered in coping with the disability child. Parent-child relationship. A regular parent-child relationship means that parents are exercising parental authority, responsibility and control over the child by caring for, supporting, disciplining and guiding the child including making decisions about the child's education and health care. Parents and families with disabled children 
have special challenges in meeting the special needs of individuals and the family as a whole. While every family struggles with meeting everyone's diverse needs, families with disabilities present may have more challenges. Vision is the sense that allows us to integrate all of the things we learn about the world. Without normal vision, the child must learn to see and understand the world in new ways. As the child's parents, one needs the opportunity to understand how loss of vision affects their child's early development. Learn how they, as parents, can most effectively teach the child to see the world. One must realize that every child, whether visually impaired or not, is a learner. Besides this, what every child learns in the first three years of life is learned visually primarily through imitation. Parents of children who are blind and visually impaired face particularly challenges in addition to the usual parenting challenges. For example, accepting disability, stress relating to the attitudes of others in society and later dealing with the child's school education system where the question arises of whether to send the child to a regular school or to a special school with children who are visually impaired like him or her. Here let us brief the different phases of challenges in caring and dealing with their visually impaired child impacting their relationship with their child. The first phase is the diagnostic period. For example, does the child truly have a disability? The second phase is the school period with its inherent challenges that is dealing with teasing and other peer related behavior, learning academics and developing social and recreational skills. The third phase is the post public school period when the child makes the transition from the public school into the other educational or vocational activities. The fourth phase is the period when the parents are no longer able to provide assistance and guidance for their son or daughter. Mother-child relationship. If congenitally impaired, mother is primarily responsible for relating to the child and for his or her needs. The expectation that mothers have from their children and their function in nurturing their children plays a significant role in the relationship that develops. Father-child relationship. Fathers are more likely to internalize their feelings. Fathers often respond to sons with disabilities differently from daughters with disabilities. Fathers may resent the time that their wives spend in caring for their children with disabilities. Siblings relationship. Siblings react in a variety of ways. Siblings tend to mirror the attitude and behavior of their parents to their children with disabilities. Some siblings play a critical role in fostering the intellectual, social and affective development of the child. Some siblings respond by eventually becoming members of helping professional that serve exceptional populations. Some siblings respond that feelings of resentment or deprivation. To conclude, relationship between family members often changes in either a positive or a negative on the birth of a disabled child. The major patterns of parental reactions to their blind child include acceptance, denial of the effect of disability, overprotectiveness, rejection and acknowledgement. Students, I hope this session gives you a clear idea on birth of a child with visual impairment and its effects on parents and family dynamics. Thank you.